discussing a uh, very delicate subject, emotional subject, coping uh, after the loss of a pet. Yeah, this is after Sue Perkins wrote a grief-stricken letter to her dog Pickle and it went um, viral on the internet and it's really struck a chord with everybody here of mourning a pet what you say to people, how you deal with it yourself. It's certainly got you talking. Uh, we're joined by Diane James now. Uh, Diane is from the Blue Cross Animal Charity and uh, she is particularly uh, works as a pet bereavement support service. The fact that there is a support yeah. service, Diane, says a lot, doesn't it? That people really do need help to deal with grief when their pets die. It does, and um, we've been going for over 21 years. Um, it's not only for pet loss, as in bereavement, it's any type of loss. If your marriage breaks up and you need to um, separate your dog, uh, if it gets lost or stolen, um, if you need to rehome for financial illness. So it's not only for grief, but we deal with any type of loss. Yeah, and people get so emotionally attached to their pets. Such a bond, isn't it? Yeah. They do. It's unconditional love with a pet. Yeah. Well, let's hear about that love and how it affects people. And I think first up, we have Haley. Hi Haley. Hello Haley. Oh hi. Yeah. Hi Haley, you're you're grieving the loss of dogs, your two dogs, Sam and Alice, and, and your horse. And um, yeah, I've lost, um, yeah, I've lost like four dogs and um, sorry, I'm trying to hold it together. Um, four dogs and one horse and um, it, it's it's been a while and I just can't move on really. Um, I just feel guilty well, and when you say it's been a while, how long are we talking? Um, well, it's come up to two years since the most recent loss. Um, but I still feel the first loss 20 years ago, as if it was yesterday. Oh, that's not right. You're that's still not struggling right. with that. Yeah. I understand that even you have areas in the house that, that you don't want changed because it reminds you of your pets. Tell us about that. Yeah, um, I can't hoover up the dog hair in. I can't, can't hoover up or anything. Um, because it's painful. <laughs> yeah, it's just really All right, okay. Well, look, we've got Diane here. This is what she does. Okay, Diane, speak to Haley. Hi, Haley. Thank you for calling in today. Hi. Um, I can hear that you're uh, really, really distressed there and you feel a lot of pain. Um, have you talked to anybody previously about how you're feeling? Um, no, not really. Um, you kind of feel that people understand human grief, but with pets, most people can go to just the dog, so you don't get the same level. I, and I would definitely say that you are uh, really, really grieving as well. And it's, it would need to be, that you could do with a lot of talking and it'd be nice for you to um, contact us and talk to us because to me, since it's been going on so long for you, yeah. you really, really need to have um, a long chat with us. Contact us and we can talk because you also said you have a sense of guilt as well. And that's totally normal. Yeah, well, in case I'm yeah. something and it, it's kind of my fault. I should have spotted my dog, had looking me and you know I'm sure that you did the best that you could for your pets because um, just listening to you and you care how much so much for your dogs but really um, you've got an awful lot going on there and I think that the best advice I could give you yeah. is to contact us and, and we'll work with you and is that how she starts to move on because she's saying I've never decorated my house since I lost my first pet 22 years ago because I can't stand a painter with a dirty patch where he used to brush against the wall when he was muddy and, and that is quite common because it's keeping a link that um, you don't want to lose. Um, but once you start to work through why you feel like you do, you'll find that you'll be able to start to do things like decorating um, and put your energies into different things. Well, if Hayley, you stay on the line, Hayley, we'll take your details and we'll, we'll give those to Diane and we can put you in touch. At the Blue the Cross. At the yeah. Blue Cross. Now, let's see pictures of Eddie and Buzz. Eddie and Buzz are Jack, were Jack Russell's. And this is a very, very sad story from Ta Tamsin. Tamsin, tell me what happened. Um, more recently, we just got home from um, being away on a family holiday, and we got back to find out that Buzz, um, our Jack Russell, had had to be put down. My grandpa, he was saying my grandparents, and they had to make the decision to have him put down. They oh. think he had a directed heart attack. And this was complete news to you. You were unaware of this on holiday. No, it was completely unaware. They made the decision not to tell us because they they wanted us to enjoy our holiday and there's nothing that we could have physically done and you know you have to put the dog first to be the best dog owner so they, they took that they made that decision oh, to be the right one awful decision for them to have to make um how are you dealing with, with this bereavement of losing your lovely pets 
It is an awful lot of people do and they can do a variety of things but they like to do have remembrance um, in some way as a pet. So for example, having their ashes and remembering them is really important because it keeps that link with them. And here, particularly with the mutasmin, I would say that the fact that you didn't um, know about it and you've now moved as a family and you've, you've done this gives you great comfort as well because it helps you start to move on slightly. Yeah. The word guilt has been used twice mm -hmm. already. You know, Tamsin saying her father feels very guilty because they were away, but you never know when these things could happen, do you? No, and to be fair, that's easier said than done because um, whilst we say that it's easy to say that when you come back off holiday, don't feel guilty, you wouldn't know. Part of your grieving process is that you will feel guilty. Um, however, you know it's not your fault. And Tamsin, you, you would say that your pets, your little dogs, were just as much a part of your family as any human member? Absolutely. Um, first and foremost, they are they are fully fledged family members, and anyone who knows myself and my family will know that they come with us. We you know we look for dog friendly places that we can take them. I try to take my dog on holiday with me, and um, you know we can't imagine our life without them. So when you lose that, it is it's like losing a, a family member. Well, our condolences yes, well, yes. to you, Tamsin. You. And then what to say? John is on the line, and John, your your problem is. Uh, when you know someone who has lost a pet, how you deal with that, how, what you say to them? John? Yes. Hi, John. I mean, that's, that's the problem, is that my wife, my wife and I have been dog groomers for five or six years. And um, of course, in the course of time, we see quite a few of our clients, friends, lose pets. And um, it's, it's sort of... I just wondered, it's sort of verification in a way that I'm thinking of with you. And what, what I seem to have discovered is that you can set a certain amount that's useful to people when they're bereaved of their pet. I'm thinking of a, a couple of some friends of ours, Rita with a dog buddy, died recently, and they're very upset. And finding something to say to them is quite difficult, but I don't know whether you agree. What I seem to have discovered is that people, they just seem mainly for... for me to shut up, she's fair enough, and then to just talk about their pet. And that seems like a sensible, it seems like a sensible well, idea. Let's hear what Dan says about that. I've got to say, John, you're spot on there. The most important thing is, is to let them talk. Um, not to give them what you think is the best thing in their interest, not to give them your opinion, and to listen, because that's really what they need to do, is to be listened to. Oh, you're doing a great job there, John. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what about a dog dying in an accident? Uh, Tanya says her dog was died. A dog died like this. She cried for weeks. I helped her make a memory box, and she would sleep with his photo by her bed. Um, and there's there's the lovely little dog there, little pup dog there. I would say that's the the perfect thing. When you have um, a child who experiences the death of a pet, it's usually the first time they've experienced a loss. Um, and things like memory box are absolutely amazing to help them to to come to terms more with the loss. Um, and also um, scrapbooks, diaries, um, and also another way of, with a small child is to be honest. Because a lot of people don't um, think that if they say they've gone away, um, that will help. Be yeah. honest. Frankie yeah. says, my two-year-old golden Labrador Murphy, would you hear this, died very suddenly two months ago. My friend was walking in and he collapsed. And Frankie says, I still can't believe it. It is. It's, uh, with, with that, it's um, really difficult because Frankie's coming to terms now. Um, and also, I know that she's um, got another dog, and other animals will grieve and miss the dog that's gone. Um, so for Frankie, coming to terms with it, is she can now put all her focus and energy into the dog that's left, because he'll be feeling lost. Thanks for your focus and energy. Thank you. That's Diane Thank James you. from the Blue Cross, and she is from their Pet Bereavement Support Service, and she's there, and uh, they are available 
uh, if you need to get through a press for evening. Thank you very yeah, much indeed. Thank you, thank you so Dan, and our condolences and, and love to all of you out there who've lost pets. It's a very difficult time, isn't it? Uh, after the break, 